Good. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I gotta get a big of pain out loud. Oh, you haven't seen one like this before? <laughs> Here, Kevin, this sit. Is a king size. Hey guys, as here at Shield Canine. So I'm here with Kevin and Dan. Dan's holding the camera. We are going to be running Kevin into a urban setting for the first time. Now, Ocharkas aren't really urban dogs. They're more of a dog to kind of live out on the farm, live on the ranch. They're not dogs that really like to leave home turf, but I'm gonna take this guy in to this strange urban environment to see if Kevin's really going to understand how to generalize the impulse control that we've put into him earlier. So I'm sure he's gonna make some mistakes. That's okay. I'm here to help him through those mistakes i'm here to make sure that he generalizes the training that we've already done again i'm not focused on pinpoint obedience i'm more focused on his overall temperament and behavior around the distractions for the first time since kevin came to shield canine he is out of shield canine let's see how it goes i know i know yeah. perfect all right now you go come here kevin i gotta make sure i have got your e collar. All right, Kev. Come on, buddy. Kevin is free. Let's go, Kevin. So Kevin's like already. Is it? <laughs> Thank you. Hear that, Kevin? People like you already. You have to like them back. That's the rule. Now, I do have to admit one thing. When I took Kevin out of the kennel this afternoon, he seemed a little lower key. Um, I hope he's not getting sick or something. He does have a hot spot on his butt on this side and we have been treating it. I mean, it is a really hot day today, so we'll find out. Good boy, Kev. So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna monitor his behavior. I already did see some arousal, like when he sees people and stuff like that. So I am gonna hold him accountable if he does make a mistake, but if he stays by me, all good. A lot of people try to hide behavior in obedience. That is not the solution to a behavioral problem. First, we address the behavioral problem, then we worry about the obedience. I'm evaluating the default behavior of the dog before I even ask for obedience. There is no sit, down, heel. There's no special command that is going to save me from him being reactive. <laughs> That's a dog. Huh. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, but they they will fight wolves. <laughs> He's a big boy. Come on, Kev. Wow. I guess people aren't. I'm used to how big Kevin is, but but I guess people aren't used to how big Kevin is. Good. Come on, Kev. So, so far, really nice behavior. He's interested, he's looking at things. Good boy, Kevin. He's smelling some stuff. Kevin, come on. I think if I take him through there, all the girls are gonna try to pet him and somebody might die, so we're not gonna do that. But, well, we got some bikes here. Come on, Kevin, heel. And if he reacts to these bikes, there's gonna be a correction. And if I see him amping up, I'll pre-correct him. Come on. Good boy. Good. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I gotta get a big chunk of pain out loud. Oh, you haven't seen one like this before? <laughs> Here, Kevin, Jesus, sit. A king size. Jesus Christ. Guess how old he is. Five years? No. Eleven months. Jesus Christ. It's looking good though. I'm happy with it. Come on, Kev. Come on. Come on. Come on, Kevin. Shh, 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 shh. Come on. Come on. Uh-uh. Is that a grizzly bear? It's kind of like one. <laughs> Come on, Kevin. Down. 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 Good. Three commands, Kevin, every single time. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm pretty happy with this. This is all I could have asked for. The only thing is if I wanna keep tightening up the obedience, I can certainly do that. If I push the obedience a little more, now the dog's gonna move more into stress. I could do it. The question is, should I do it? 
isn't going to help him overall. As you can see, he's able to hold a very loose leash. He's walking with me. He definitely notices things. He's very keyed into me. He understands the rules. The big challenge for him is not when there's a ton of people, it's when there's one person passing and you're kind of all by yourself, which is very normal for more reactive dogs like him. Come on, Kev. Super. Oh, that was pretty good tight confines. Really good work from Kev. Come on, big boy. Come on. One of the steps before we go complete off leash, guys, is you don't, you have the leash on the dog, but you don't use it, right? That's the big thing. You know, a lot of people ask, how do you get to off leash reliability? The key is you have a leash there for safety's sake, but you don't use it, right? If that leash is white knuckled in your hand, you're not ready to go off leash. But if the leash is loose, and it's just there as a stopgap, and you find that you don't really have to use it, then no problem. Come on, Kevin, come on. Come on. Yeah, good job, buddy. Can definitely see Kevin's a little lower energy today. I don't know if it's the heat. I don't know if he's a little under the weather, but on the plus side, he is behaving like an angel. Sit. He looks like a lion. He looks like a lion? <laughs> good, come on. Come on, Kevin. Come on. That's good. Come on, big boy, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, you can't be late. He's dead. All right, guys. I don't want to. I don't want to scare anybody, but uh, no leash. So it's me and Kevin now. It's just me and Kevin. No leash, no problem. I've already seen the behavior. I know like he's gonna be good. I know the obedience is could be a little bit tighter. But in terms of the actual temperament of the dog, his overall behavior, it's exactly where we want it to be. Kevin, sit, sit, good sit, good boy. Super work, good. Yeah. Oh, he's 11 months. Come on, Kev. Good. Well, again, guys, close proximity, no problems. So that's a very different dog than we saw. What was it, like a month, six weeks? I don't even know how long it's been. It hasn't been that long. I haven't really been putting tons of time into Kevin. I try to get to him at least once a day. Other than that, you know, some of our kennel techs look after him, just make sure he gets out, so on and so forth. But I've missed days too, guys. Like I haven't been as regular with the training with Kevin as I'd like to be. But you can see the fundamental change in his behavior because he understands the rules. But he also understands I'm gonna keep him safe, right? Kevin, sit. Down. Good. Now I guarantee you that's his favorite command. Well, we got our Caucasian of Charka off leash. You can't beat that, can you? Break. Come on, Kevin. Come on, Kevin. <laughs> Look at his slow ass get up. You're so good. You're so good. Come on. Come on, Kevin. Come on, Kevin. Come on, Kevin. Come on, Kevin. Good boy. Good job, Kev. He's awesome, man. He just like stays with you. I, I was just worried that guy was going to like reach out and touch him, but he didn't. And that's part of it, guys. You got to be able to advocate for your dog. Like if you think someone's going to get hands, you got to tell them, hey, man, like you can't, like you can't touch the dog. So guys, there's a dog coming. We're just going to have Kevin hold his down. To be honest, though, guys, Kevin was always more concerned with people than he was with dogs. So I'm really happy with his behavior around people. With dogs, he just wanted to kind of play with them, get a little rough housing with them, but that's it. There was no real aggression. Well, you can't beat that for the first trip. Maybe the only trip, to be honest with you. All right, guys, well, that wraps up our uh, hound trip with Kevin. He did better than I ever could have imagined that he was gonna do. I'm so pleased with his behavior. I was ready to correct him a little more. I was ready for him to make some mistakes, so on and so forth, but I gave him some verbal reminders when I could see his arousal level getting a little too high. But other than that, we didn't have any blow-ups. I thought there would for sure be a blow-up or two. We had a lot of people approach us really close. We had people yelling at us. We had people getting excited and amped up. And as you can see, like, he was just an angel. Now, there's no denying he seems a little bit lower energy than he normally is. I mean, you can't beat the behavior as you see it right now. Down. Good boy. Case in point. I, I had no idea how he was with skateboards and uh, bikes and so on and so forth. And as you can see, like he definitely notices them, but it's not something that he's going to make a big deal out of. So he really has got the idea of the impulse control down. So very happy with the with this outing. Beautiful. Thank you. So as you guys can see, we have a different Kevin now than what we did a month or six weeks ago. I can't remember if it was a month or six weeks, but 
So guys, here's the thing. Kevin is not the only dog we've done this with. Kevin is one of probably by now a thousand dogs we've done this with, if not more. People always say, oh, your, your training's only for German Shepherds. Or Look, obviously Kevin's not gonna give you like the slick obedience that you're gonna get out of a nice working line German Shepherd or Belgian Melwa, but he's gonna be obedient and he's gonna behave himself and he's gonna be under control. Kevin's a sweet dog. Like I said, the reason why we took him on and I knew that we could do this with him is because to be quite frank, it's, it's nice for people to see that it's not just a German Shepherd thing. It's not just a lab thing. It's not just a Malwa thing. This is something that you can do with literally any breed of dog. The fundamental result is a nice, well-behaved, balanced dog that you can take anywhere and do anything with. Not that I recommend you run out and get yourself a Caucasian of Charka, but if you do happen to have one, by all means, take them through the program. You are going to get this result. You're going to have a nice, well-behaved dog that's with you that understands the concept of impulse control, that understands how he must or must not behave. And that's balanced training for you. You know, like, I'm gonna say this, I know I always get after them and I have to get after them because I don't consider them to be competition. What these people are is they're snake oil salesmen. They actually cause the death of dogs. They kill good training, they kill good dogs. The positive only trainers, guys, they talk, blah, 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 blah. Have any of them shown with a dog like Kevin, which by the way, for me, isn't all that bad, this type of change in such a short period of time, a dog completely out of control, a dog super reactive, a dog that has a bite history to this. Very calm, very relaxed, very obedient in a highly distracting setting and in a very short period of time. The results are here for you to see. The dogs don't lie. The dogs never lie. I guess that's all I have to say on that. Thank you for watching. Guys, if you want to train with us online, shieldcanineonline.com. We have a course for everybody. We have it for puppies, rescue dogs, off-breeds like Kevin, German Shepherds. We've got everything on there, shieldcanineonline.com. Check us out. And if you want to train with us in person, check out one of our brick and mortar locations, shieldcanine.ca. Thank you for watching. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing Kevin's progress as much as I have.